Stack Graphics contains a number of different methods for forecasting time series data. That's data that's recorded over time, once a month, once a day, that sort of thing. There are random walk models. There are models based upon various types of trends. There are growth curves, moving average models, exponential smoothers, ARIMA models, quite a few different models. It's very laborious to go through these models one by one, which is why we've added an automatic forecasting procedure. The automatic forecasting procedure fits every model and finds the model that would have best forecasted the historical data. This is done by looking at what are called the one ahead forecasting errors. Starting at time one, the takes a particular model tries to predict what the value would have been at time two, compares the actual result to the forecast, then forecasts time three, time four, and so forth. So you can then collect these what are called one ahead forecasting errors and calculate some sort of criterion, often an information criterion like a Kaiki's information criteria or, or the Hannon Quinn criterion or the Schwarz Bayesian information criterion. Or you could do some more traditional calculations of the errors like the mean squared error the mean absolute error, the mean absolute percentage error, whichever measure you like. And usually a model that has performed well historically will also forecast the future rather well. To demonstrate the automatic forecasting procedure, I've loaded a file called Golden Gate into the Stack Graphics data sheet. Now this is an interesting data set that I collected years ago when I took a sabbatical at Berkeley. What it measures is the amount of traffic across the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco on a monthly basis starting in January 1968 and going on for quite a few years. It's actually a very interesting data set. If I go to the top menu to describe time series descriptive methods, I can plot the data for you. Where it says data, I'm going to put traffic. Where it says time indices, I'll put month. Press OK. Take all the defaults. All I want to see is the plot of the data. Here it is in the upper right-hand corner. This is monthly data. And monthly traffic across the Golden Gate Bridge is very seasonal. Every summer, the traffic peaks, and every winter, it falls off again. But there's more in this data than that, too. It's interesting. You'll notice, starting in 1968, there was a fairly healthy trend increase in traffic until around the end of 73, beginning of 74. This is when the initial oil embargo hit in the United States, and there were very long lines at the gas pumps, very hard to get gasoline. It persisted for a month or so, but the interesting thing in this data set is that if you look at the trend line, the effect later down the line, another year or two, it took quite a few years to get back to the original trend line that was present before the oil embargo. And then a little later there was a second gasoline shortage, and now we're off on a third trend line. Well, the question from the point of view of forecasting was, when I collected the data, what is going to happen over the next several years? And that's where the automatic forecasting procedure comes in. To forecast this data, I'm going to go to the top menu and select Forecast. Now, there are two choices on the Forecast menu. One is User Specified Model. That's where I'd go if I wanted to fit a particular model, one particular model, and knew what it was. The automatic model selection is where I'm going to go, though. This is one where I can fit quite a few different models and let it pick the best. Now, the initial automatic dialog box 
automatic forecasting dialog box already has traffic and month filled in. The only things I'll need to do here, first in the seasonality field, I want to tell it that the data have a seasonality of 12. That there's a seasonal effect up and down every 12 observations in the data set. I'll also go down where it says number of forecasts and change it from 12 to 36. That'll ask it to forecast three years out. When I press OK, it'll bring up a forecasting options dialog box. Here I tell it what different types of models I want to consider, the random walks and the trend models, the growth curves, the ARIMA models, and so forth. I think I'll check them all. Also, down where it says ARIMA models, you'll see edit fields where you specify the most complicated ARIMA model you wanted to consider. And what it will do is it'll actually consider various types of ARIMA models with different orders for the AR, MA, and differencing terms up to whatever order you specify. So I've basically said, try everything up to second order uh, on these parameters. Over toward the right, where it says method selection criterion, you can select some particular metric to use to decide what the best model is. By default, it's set to the Akaiki information criteria. I think I'll leave it at that. You can also, using the buttons, apply various adjustments, uh, change some of the estimation parameters, even specify one or more input series to use as regressors in the models. I'm going to keep it simple, though. I'm going to use what are called auto-projective techniques. I'm just going to use the past behavior of the Golden Gate Bridge traffic to predict what's going to happen in the future. So I'll just press OK and now it will ask me what tables and graphs I want. I think I'll take all the defaults, press OK again. Now the program will try all those models. There we go. And find the best, in this case according to the Kaiki information criterion. What it found, by the way, is a rather complicated ARIMA model with it looks like about six different parameters. Incidentally, this is a nice place to use the zoom and pan facility of version 16. If I push the pan and zoom button on the analysis toolbar, I can expand the x-axis and then scroll back and forth along the time dimension. That gives me a better view of these forecasts. Actually, what you see is 36 months, the best forecasts, that's the line in the middle, and then 95% forecast limits on either side. Very easy to get a good forecast in many cases using this automatic forecasting procedure.